Divulging classified information or technology can be punished by life imprisonment. So when writing about current technology that is secret, military strategists commonly use the ruse of talking about existing systems as being future technology, or veil their comments so that only the select few will see the deeper meaning. It is standard practice to produce an unclassified version that can be published publicly and a classified version that is more explicit or in many cases contradictory. In other words, often what is printed publicly are lies. Psychotronic research is in its infancy, but the U.S. Army already possesses an operational weapon system designed to do what Lieutenant Colonel J.B. Alexander would like ESP to do. Except this weapon system uses existing communications media. It seeks to map the minds of neutral and enemy individuals and then to change them in accordance with U.S. national interests. It must strengthen our national will to victory and it must attack and ultimately destroy that of our enemy. It both causes and is affected by physical combat, but it is a type of war which is fought on a far more subtle basis as well in the minds of national populations involved. We must attack that will before it is locked in place. We must instill in it a predisposition to inevitable defeat. Strategic mind war must begin the moment war is considered to be inevitable. It must seek out the attention of the enemy nation through every available medium, and it must strike at that nation's potential soldiers before they put on their uniforms. It is in their homes and their communities but they are most vulnerable to mind war. Was the U.S. defeated in the jungle of Vietnam, or was it defeated in the streets of American cities? In its strategic context, mind war must reach out to friends, enemies, and neutrals alike across the globe. And you will forgive me I if I speak bluntly. So the universe grows smaller yes. every day. And the threat of aggression uh, by any group, anywhere, uh, can no longer be tolerated. There must be security uh, for all, or no one is secure. Now, this does not mean giving up any freedom, except the freedom to act irresponsibly. Now, your ancestors knew this when they made laws to govern themselves and hired policemen to enforce them. We of the other planets have long accepted this principle. We have an organization for the mutual protection of all planets and for the complete elimination of aggression. The test of any such higher authority is, of course, the police force that supports it. For our policemen, we created a race of robots. Their function is to patrol the planets in spaceships like this one and preserve the peace. In matters of aggression, we have given them absolute power over us. This power cannot be revoked. Now that we have your pretty bib on, so we don't get a, a mess on your pretty dress, you ready for it? Are you hungry? Yes, Mommy. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're a baby. This is big girl food.
We have to get you some baby food. No, no baby food. Do big girls play with dollies and suck on their pacifiers and wear diapers? No, I'm the only baby's mommy. So you need to have baby food until you grow up to be a big girl. Yes, mommy. Gilmore Girls is the best show on television to exist. The coffee addiction. I mean, who doesn't love coffee, right? Coffee is the nectar of the gods, the liquid that makes the world go round. And even in the very first episode of the show, one of the first things that they say is, like, how many cups of coffee have you had to Lorelai? And Lorelai's like, she lies, and then eventually went up. She's she's had five cups of coffee already, but you know, Luke's coffee is better, obviously. So that is how I live my life. You know, six cups of coffee, probably you know, almost enough. Also, the line where I like my coffee with where I like my oxygen. I like a lot of coffee. <laughs> All right, point number two. All the food. Not only do they eat at Luke's Diner all the time, which by the way makes me constantly crave burgers, french fries, pancakes, and coffee, as we mentioned, uh, but also whenever they do crazy movie nights, like pizza, the takeout food, Al's Pancake World, the weird cuisines, as weird as they are, somehow are evocative to my taste, and all I do the entire show is crave food. Then they have spreads of ice cream and like Oreos and the crazy desserts that they do. And even Suki's cooking of like the decadent, like wonderful food. That makes me crave fancy food, which I can't afford. So all of the food on the show is just incredible. It makes my mouth water the whole time. And I'm just eating while I watch it because I'm hungry because there's so much good food on the show. Point number three, Lorelai's wardrobe. Lorelai's clothes throughout the entire season series are just amazing. They have the animal print, there's the bright colors, and then you notice on the little sign here the her dog sweater. Uh, she wears it a couple times actually. It's one of her reoccurring pieces. It's the sweater with this like Pekingese dog on the front. And it's perfect. It's like she like she like hit the hipster funky clothing of it before hipsters even found it. How did she do it? I don't know. An amazing woman. Alright, point number four. The most lovable town people of Stars Hollow you could ever love. All of the town people of Stars Hollow make you want to live in Stars Hollow. It makes it look like the funniest town to live in. You have Babette, Miss Patty, who the two of them together has been said to be my reincarnate. Number one. 
Um, there's also Gypsy, Kirk, and Taylor, even though he's kind of annoying, but you know, he's part of the town. And Suki and Jackson and Lane, there's Lane's mother. There's all of these hilarious characters into one town. And I want to live there. I mean, literally, it makes me want to find a small town and, like, put up, you know, these people wanted. Just to discuss if that's what it is. One technology. Skin surveillance. It's like a whole world in the life. Most people like it can. And it's also a military technique because it must energy be right to you. <laughs> so, that's what it is. So first, the Earth's magnetic field is at its peak. There's lots of turbulence going on. It might even be a geomagnetic storm. A few hours later, things settle down and things are very quiet. Right then is a launch window for more effective psychic work. And the interesting thing about it is that it suggests that the brain is accommodating, that there's some mechanism in our brains that changes our consciousness following the Earth's magnetic field. And that from time to time when these extra bits of information, these extra psychic perceptions are more available, our brain is overcompensating, not for geomagnetic noise, which you might think would interfere with the brain's functioning, but rather for geomagnetic quiet so that our brains, which are, normally, which are normally on, everywhere through the brain, unless those areas are told to be turned off, everything is active unless it's inhibited, um, leave us more sensitive to quiet times in the Earth's magnetic field. And the other thing about our brains is that they're filled with magnetite. Our brains are actually responding to the Earth's magnetic field because we are wired up to do so with a, a heavy load of actual magnetite crystals. There are five million of them per gram in the center of the brain, the normal brain tissues. Five million per gram. And there are 1,400 grams in your average human brain. Um, interestingly, the outer area of the brain the meninges, the membrane that surrounds it, has a hundred million of these magnetite crystals per gram. And the shape of these magnetic crystals doesn't occur in nature. It's only found in biological tissue. Now, since this was discovered, it was published in December of 1992 under the somewhat uh, heady title of Biomagnetite Mineralization in the Human Brain published by Joseph Kirschwink and a group of researchers that he worked with. I actually called him on the phone because I was very interested in the evolution of this system. And he did tell me, which hadn't been published, that um, other primate brains have been found to have the same minerals in them. Uh, chimpanzees, gibbons, lab, you know, around, I don't know what the primates were, but he confirmed that we are not the only species that has this. <coughs> And not only are the crystals formed in the brain tissue, and it's hard to explain how the, that unique shape would appear if they weren't formed there, they're also organized. And they tend to occur in nice, neat chains. And this maximizes a thing called the magnetic moment, which is kind of a magnetic analog to momentum. It allows them to actually handle more force, and that's what magnetic fields are. They're a force, not an energy. It allows them to handle more magnetic force, which perhaps is why uh, the brain seems to compensate, not for geomagnetic noise or storms, but for quiet, is because they are actually arranged in such a way as to be able to more readily handle huge amounts of information from the Earth's magnetic field, large changes, big magnetic fields, and when things suddenly drop and become quiet, these long chains of magnetite crystals must needs change their function as well. And they don't seem to do it on a dime. Seems to take several hours for this to happen. Oh yeah, definitely. I think one has already succeeded uh, drowning uh, small planes with uh, laser beams. 
and of course the same thing should be possible also with charged particle beams. One great advantage of charged particle beams is that they normally have a very high efficiency, whereas laser beams not always have such a high efficiency. So I would definitely think that it could be used as a weapon uh, with uh, anti-ballistic missile defense uh, very far down the line, still many years away, I would say. I don't think presently it is possible, but of course, think about spaceflight was considered to be impossible, and it's today a reality. Although it's kind of been coming for quite some time. Because the last one video you made was <clears throat> one about how the Carlsville PD did nothing about how, I mean, I called there was a dog in the car on a hot summer day, but yet they didn't get, they get it two shits. But that's not, but that's, that was a long time ago. But yeah. I also didn't expect to have the same background as I did my other intro videos and stuff. But figured something and why not? I also was planning on doing something about I'm ranting about how these beggars that are outside Walmart and stuff. I mean, I'll probably get to that, but mainly this one, which has been building for quite some time, but I figured I have to come out like this. Come out. I mean, just let loose. Well, they told me, oh, we don't need you. We have the rest of the week off. That will not pay the damn bills. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Stay home, watch daytime TV in my pajamas and masturbate all day? No. I mean, I need to make my money so I can continue to keep the lights on and all that stuff. <sighs> no. I think it's just the playing the game. I mean, once again, because like I said, because I don't play those games, they want to, like, whatever. I mean, I have been mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, probably hurt, beaten up, all that stuff, that loud, those last parts, not literally, but you know how it is, for years. And apparently it's also the popularity. I mean, whatever. I mean, just because I don't kiss the boss's asses, or play their games, or get on my hands and knees and it's like, Please sir, please sir, don't screw me over again, I'll do anything you want. I don't do that crap. And it's like, but yeah, every time I want to actually go out, do, like, assert myself and say, what the fuck, my conscience, who I really want to kick his ass, tells me not to. But I'm going to have to say, screw that, I'm doing it. I'm going to have to go in there and demand to know why. I mean, me, a long-time loyal employee, gets treated like I'm the new kid on the block. I mean, 14 years, and I'm ending up being treated like I've been there 14 days. I mean, not needed, doing other people's lame-ass jobs, all that stuff. I mean, why? <laughs> Everyone is going to be crushed alive. There are more homes to be crushed. Hmm, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tigger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Not because you're dirty, not because you're clean, just because you look like a bit behind the magazine. You! <laughs> you're next! Oh, come here while I grab you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, both. <laughs> oh, it feels so good to crush you in my hand. <laughs> now I can hear your tiny screams inside. Mm, all to be murdered. Mm, I hear tiny screams. <laughs> You're all gonna die. Crushed. Oh, in my giantess hands. Mm. And they use these other individuals much as puppets. So a man such as the President of the United States, the President of France, the Queen of England and so forth would be puppets 
of this shadowy power structure that holds itself behind the scenes. This so-called organization, this organizational structure that um, lords it over the rest of the earth, absolutely control um, financial organizations and elites. They would con control the BIS, the Bank for International Settlements in Switzerland. They would control the United States Federal Reserve banks. They would control the Bank of England. They would control the European Central Bank. They would control national parliaments and international parliaments such as the UN or the European Parliament. They would control royal houses whether in Europe and Saudi Arabia, Japan or elsewhere. They would control um, technology, high tech technology and the development, uh, development of technology. Ultimately they would determine what technology is available in the public realm for, for the use of people like me and you. He wants mine, so to come to love. Do for you, my feelings will dry up. But for you, I am born. Just how for 